My name is Rory. I'm the co-founder and chief technology officer of Chaotic Moon Studios. What was your first Windows Phone 7 project? Our first Windows Phone 7 project was The Revenants. We did a couple in tandem, but that was our original title, and we were really excited about working the on The Revenants? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, it's did you a, come up with that name? or Actually, that's Ben's name and concept. Um, so we had a really good time on that. Uh, it was, um, again, it was really interesting to be building something while the platform was you know, still being tooled up and, and have the opportunity to kind of contribute back in cases and, and really take advantage of features. Uh, we were excited about being a, a launch title, which it, which it was in the, in the Xbox game section. Uh, so that was, um, you know, that was kind of a big deal for us. You know, a migration process if, uh, or, or the differences between an iPhone platform and say a Windows Phone 7 platform, what, what would you say some of those highlights are moving, uh, moving to a platform if you already have an existing app on iPhone? Or if you don't, for instance, doing like, a net new I feel effort. like we have a little bit more freedom on Windows Phone 7 in some ways. I, I think Microsoft took a number of pages from Apple's book on things they do right. And then I think they kind of went through and really listened to what developers were saying we also would like to do. And they've done a lot of that. And so, you know, migration's been a big part of what we've been doing. Um, you know, we're right now, we've just uh, migrated Enigma, which is a very popular iPhone game, uh, and we're in, importing it over. Uh, it's been fairly straightforward. It's been more of, you know, putting <coughs> tweaks and touches and polishes on it than, than a lot of difficulty. Um, you know, you always want that magic button that you just say, like, make it work over there, right? And there's been all of these programming languages that have the promise of that. Uh, and, and none of them have, have really delivered, right? And there's all sorts of tools that give you this multi-platform view that say, well, if you do this, you can do it every, you know, do it everywhere. And it never kind of works out. It like does 80% or something. Um, so what I prefer is kind of what we have with Windows on 7, which is it's very well documented. We have a really rich tool set and makes it very easy for our engineers to say, this is what we've done on the iPhone. Here are the, you know, uh, you know, sister components, if you will, on Windows Phone 7 and build a migration path. It's really straightforward. I mean, we've migrated several things and we're about to migrate, uh, you know, another couple of apps, as you know, and there hasn't been, you know, there hasn't been a big migration issue. Uh, we haven't had to call you guys or go look stuff up. I mean, it's all very straightforward. Um, that's far different, especially from the Android platform. Uh, with Android, um, you know, we find we have to target a specific OS on a specific device, and you know, there's always some things missing, and and it becomes, uh, you know, it's the, by comparison, um, probably, you know, eight to ten x the, the the time and effort to port something like Enigma to Android than it is, uh, you know, to port it onto Windows Phone Seven. Okay. So well. there's been a, there's been an advantage in us, and we've actually have our business development people looking for opportunities when we talk to customers to port things to Windows Phone 7 because we know that it's not a, you know, going to be a nightmarish headache, right? It's pretty straightforward. So you mentioned the panoramic control. Mm -hmm. You like the panos. The, I do. The dashboarding aspect. A lot of people do. It's, it's a very unique control. Talk about some of those things that you really like, I mean, from a Metro perspective. Yeah, I mean, as far as Metro goes, there's, there's a number of things I like. Again, huge fan of the tiles. I just think that being able to look at my phone and instantly get the information I need is, you know, I mean, that's what I have it there for, right? It's my life. And um, with, the, with the panorama, what I liked most was that Microsoft took a, a kind of a, a diverging path away from where everything else is going. I mean, if you look at iPhone kind of coming out, you know, ahead of everyone and setting the standard. Android quickly started to look, you know, like it. Bada, all these other platforms quickly started to say, well, people really like that on iPhone, so we'll have that kind of feature over here and have that. And what I really enjoyed about, you know, this project and, and what I really enjoy about Windows Phone 7 is that Microsoft isn't an also ran. Um, it's risky. Uh, you're going in a completely different re direction. A lot of people. Um, it takes them a little bit to get the pano and to get the, the, the look and feel of it. Um, but it's super intuitive. I think when I, say, when I say that, I mean for developers to say, what can I do with this? Because it's really intuitive to users, which often, as you know, is not intuitive to engineers, um, which is why when engineers build a product, often users can't use it. But um, you know, I really think that it's uh, doing something different. It's doing something that uh, is unique and allows me as a developer to have a, a tool set as far as a UI perspective goes to where I can do some really different things. And we have some we have something pretty cool planned that we're, you know, Ben has asked us not to talk about. We have something really, really cool planned uh, for this year 
on Windows Phone 7 that's going to really use Metro to its full extent, as well as the ability to surface that, that lower level information. Uh, well, I understand you have, uh, we have Revenants for you to show us. Uh, is we your do first have Xbox Revenants. Live title? So the Revenants is a really simple touch-based game, and it's very surprising how fast people become addicted to it. So if we start a new game here, let's go on the easy level, because I'm not the best player. We find ourselves with a spirit that's awakened in this kind of dungeon-like prison. There's multiple levels of these, and the goal of the game is I can kind of move around here, and then I can make these portals, if I can make a portal. And in making these portals, complete the circle there, I create a vortex. I collect all of the spirits of these enemies that I'm trying to battle. And as we do that, more enemies will appear and we'll unlock some achievements. So we just unlocked the Banish achievement, which will give us points in our Xbox Live console on the Xbox. We'll do a room transition here in a second. And so we move into a new level. And as we move into a new level, there's a lot more enemies and there's a lot more uh, objects. They also, each enemy has a separate behavior. So you notice I tried the same technique I tried previously and that didn't work. And that's because spiders act different than rats, act different than centipedes, and so on and so forth. So now I'll try to capture all of those. And then I'll try to set up a portal here so that I can capture them. The spiders will wander aimlessly in there, whereas the rats and others won't. So that unlocked an achievement called It's a Trap. And that's where basically you take some of the enemies and you lay the trap out before them and then they walk into it. But again, if I try that again with some of these other enemies, it won't work. Oops. And that's our game. 